Hopefully you lovely folks can see us again. Okay. So I do apologise for that one and all. Um, I realised my phone was telling me that we were all still rolling together and uh, we most certainly were not. Because I was like, hey, let me tell you, here's some thoughts and feels about, uh, about bows and things like that. And I was like, oh. Huh. And then I was, uh, I did the, uh, the obvious cha uh, challenge, which was, uh, can, I see, uh, can I see some friendos? And there was no friendos. I was like, hmm, there must be a problem. So, yeah. I want you all to know that I'm thoroughly ignoring my book at the moment. Check it out. I have, like, the coolest book that one could ignore. Because I didn't know if the internet was going to work, if this, if this little uh, walking experiment was going to happen. So, check it out. I got... Uh, lifting this with one hand. Oh. Uh, House of Dead Leaves. Yeah. Which is actually in reverse, considering as I'm using the face cam. So, uh, if you've not heard of this, uh, this is a ridiculous adventure in non-standard narrative. Hello, hello. This is the right size. Yeah. Uh, let me... You can do smaller if you want, but it's just going to work. So that's what I'm getting, lovely folks. That size is perfect, thank you. Okay, cool. I'll do the lines a little bit thinner than this, just because the longevity of the tattoo is going to be a little bit better that way. They'll still be thick, but they won't be quite as thick as right like Hey, I will, I, would, I will wholeheartedly take your recommendation. Okay. And, um, I mean, my overall goal is to just keep adding small ones to... Yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I'm done doing the big tattoos. Uh, I seem to get cursed every time one happens, so. <laughs> Let's take a little small ones. Um, about 125 for the price. Oh, that's fine. Sounds okay. All right. Uh, you can take card, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks, Feck. Uh, oh, so Will's pro tip. When you're going to get to, uh, ink, always make sure you ask whether or not they uh, take cards, because a lot of places will be cash only. Um, uh, in a lot of studios, it's very common for there be to uh, a house owner, but the artists working here are all independent. So uh, it varies from uh, some places they'll give a cut to the house because the house obviously runs the power, provides additional materials. Um, some places um, you pay for a chair monthly. Uh, yeah. And... I'm pretty sure if I don't uh, if I don't flash my chest, I can show you guys my back tattoo. But maybe that's for another time because it's quite cold today. Uh, so Bao's saying, "Ooh, uh, a book I remember. I think I saw those in a museum once." <laughs> okay, I, I get you. I get you. No, books are cool. I think I was telling you all yesterday that I finished reading uh, Neil Gaiman's. Here we go. This is what I'm reading. House of Dead Leaves. Uh. Uh, I finished reading Neil Gaiman's uh, Graveyard book yesterday, which was very lovely. Uh, sometimes you don't need a clever read. But uh, the reason why I'm obsessed with House of Dead Leaves is because it is uh, non-standard narrative. So, hang on, let me turn this way, sir. Um, it's uh, non-standard narrative in fiction, which means that uh, the story is not told to you in the standard format. like. Sometimes there are whole pages of blank space. Sometimes there are codes to decipher. Um, the, the book in itself, how best to describe it? It, it, it does not progress in a standard fashion. So if you've ever read uh, The Ship of Theseus, or, or I think it's actually called H, but uh, it was a book produced by J.J. Abrams, of all people, and it's got like code wheels and maps and stuff in it. That one's cool. So that one is a, um, it's a fake classic. You know, like Homer's Odyssey and things like that. So it's a classic that never existed. But the story is actually told between two people in the margins writing to each other. It's very cool. Very cool. Um, so Bao says, oh, uh, oh, yeah, I read a lot, but it's for emphasis since I actually read a book, not an e-book. Oh, uh, Bao, I wish I was as... Uh, I wish I was as good a reader as yourself. Uh, I read incredibly slowly, so it takes me weeks to get through just even one book. Uh, so, Kandoran says, uh, going to segue a little bit, but what's your take on randomizer speedruns and tournaments? Or, that seems like it would be a lot of fun to watch, but really, really infuriating to play. 
because sometimes you can get like a crit success. Um, but then again, I guess a lot of the strat would be around mitigating chaos. Hmm. Like, have any of you done like uh, tournaments of like Spelunky and things like that, like speed clears and things? From what I know, a lot of people who do like Spelunky tournaments, they go for top score of gold, not speed cleared, because it's, yeah. The, the order in which you get things can often drastically change how it's going. And your dream is saying, screams make me sick, so I stick to physical books. Uh, I, I like having physical books, and I read so slowly. Also, you know, having one piece of analog medium with you that uh, isn't going to crap out if you run out of battery is liberating, to say the very least. Uh, Alpha is saying, uh, I rather enjoy watching the randomizer runs in DDQ. Yeah, those seem kind of fun. Uh, Shackle's adding to myself and Kandoran that uh, ooh, how I've usually seen it work is that tournament uh, is that a tournament is a series of races. Each race, both competitors are running the same seed. Ooh. Okay, now that's cool. That's really cool. Because that way it's not us. I mean, you're still fecked by RNG, but you're both fecked in exactly the same way. And she is saying, uh, I think uh, the kids' books that I've loved the most was His Dark Materials. And it's something very special. And uh, yeah, I don't actually know that book. Uh, and those asking, yes, I have read Good Omens and I have read American Gods and I love them both. Although, weirdly, while it's not the best of Gaiman's work, the one I keep thinking about, the one I keep going back to, is in Nancy Boys. It's the power of names, friend. Names are powerful things. Uh, Dorcha says, Before and After by C.S. Lewis. It's pretty cool. I don't know what else to add to that. I, I, and I am by no means well read. Uh, I did not start reading until oh, late teens, like super early 20s. Um, just reading for myself, not as an enforced activity by the schooling system. Uh, when I first moved into the east end of London, we moved into this one gaff. No internet. No, uh, was it no internet, no TV? We had a telly, but I didn't own a games console at that point. So all I had was this stack of David Eddings books. And so I just went through them all. I went through the whole of the Belgar the Belgaran, which is actually two series. It, it's, is it two trilogies? No. There's like 10 books in total or something. I just sat on this fucking leather sofa in the heat of London summer, just eating Minute Maid ice lollies and just reading. It was great. I didn't have anything else to do, and that was real nice. It was real nice. Um, and I know David Eddings is not the most complex of writers, uh, and for a lot of people, he's kind of an entry level into reading for your own fruition, but I liked it, yo. Greenfire saying, I will never part with this box set of books, the Beatrix Potter book set. Ah, oh, it's a good shout. So, I don't know, um, Greenfire, did you read... Uh, it's a read. Did you read a movie? God, you can tell I'm getting brain dead. Uh, did you watch the film of it? Because that was surprising. Uh, the Dreamer says, I have tinnitus, so I constantly listen to audiobooks to drown it out. Listening to the Sawbones book right now, and also Calculating Stars by Mary Robinette Cowell? Cowell. Cowell. To be three tries. I know nothing about any of those book series. I mean, one of the side effects of being an old nerd is that the amount of time you can dedicate to general nerdery unfortunately decreases. So I've had to just, you know, zero in on video games and the fun of. Uh, Unsung said, just finished uh, bullying attempted Radaban. I have no words, but I look forward that hopefully I'll be able to join more often on some monster hunting, because I do miss it, everybody. I do miss it. Um, oh, and Greenfire, I'm sorry to hear that was the, the last gift you got from your granddad, but a cool thing to be treasured. Yeah. Isocrid says he was thoroughly bullied. Oh, and Unsung and Isocrid saying, I hope so too. 
I'm gonna get that winter layered armor. Wait, so is layered armor essentially the equivalent of um, transmog? Ah, nice. Wait, so I could get like a really cool set and then I could put my pukey set over the top of it, right? Right? I'm just going to put you guys down here. Oh, sorry again for the nattering on. Yeah, there was uh, uh, another individual. Hang on. Uh, there was another individual in the waiting room. The uh, person I mentioned who was getting a consultation as we walked past, who was putting up with me waffling on. So, yeah. Uh, okay, so the winter set looks like the, the pokey gear from Monster Hunter Freedom. Okay. Ice Grid says, no, it's only certain armor. The pukey set isn't layered. Uh, Ice Grid says, you might be more interested in the, the brigand layered set. Tell me more. Tell me more. Tell me your tales. Um, I mean, I actually don't know how I feel about transmog sets for Monster Hunter because making them is such a, like making the armor is such a big part of it. Like, and those distinctive kind of, those looks are such a huge part of the whole thing. I wonder, like, I wonder if it would undo a lot of the work. Hey, how's it going, Clank? How you doing? Uh, Lizzie said, what was this uh, of you complaining about being cold? It's gone now. It's gone now. Yeah, Rosemary said, doesn't that kind of kill the Fashion Hunter challenge, making set that works but also looks good? I, I think you're right. And who's that? I'm actually using the shadow of my own face to read your chat. Uh, Cantorus says, what ho? How are we doing? Yeah, I haven't been giving it the full what ho enthusiasm because I don't want to shout indoors. Um, but Bram's saying, layered armor is weirdly much match sets. That's good, says. You can also select only certain parts of layered sets. So you can mostly look like you're wearing the pukey set, but with bright, shiny parts. Okay. Chop feckin' spiller. What are you doing? I talk, what, I, <clears throat> what did I say? I said today, no one is allowed to sub, no one is allowed to give bits, and no one is allowed to donate. It is forbidden. It is forbidden. I have forbidden it. Yeah. Yeah, forbidden. How are you going to handle that? It's apparently by ignoring me. Oh, ready? Uh, yes. Uh, do you need me to sign anything before I dive in? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> ah. uh, do you mind if I introduce you to my, my lovely folks? Nope. Oh, okay. So, ladies, gentlemen, and individuals of all persuasions, this lovely gentleman... Um, is going to be popping the uh, the longship logo onto my arm for eternity. Well, not for eternity. For as long as he's going to be here. <laughs> Only the good die young, so yeah, that yeah. means I'm going to be around for a long time. So here you go. Here's your consent form. I'm Chris. Oh, hello, Chris. I'm Will. Yeah, yeah. nice to meet you, Will. <laughs> right, I just so, yeah, need... As soon as you get this filled out, you can just leave it up the counter there, and then I'm on the station right back. Okay, thank you kindly. I'm going to fill out all the paperwork. My, my handwriting has gone entirely to heck.
Oh. Day to day. What's the day to day, everybody? I'm just doing my uh, paperworky stuff. Uh, Isocrid says, uh, "So, are we getting the shark on Will's left cheek? Right? <laughs> You'd have to donate a lot of money for that. Uh, it is the fifth. Cool. And you uh, weird colonials putting a month before the day. Okay." All right, so you guys are gonna get like a little ceiling cam view for a second. As we take on over, because I need to not, okay, so I'm gonna head on over to the station. I'm gonna drop this here. So you're gonna be looking at the ceiling so that we don't show anybody else who's not uh, signed up to this nonsense. Okay. Oh, hello, hello. That would be lovely. I can slowly disrobe. Yeah, yeah. Okie dokie. Uh, yep, the Hollow Knight hoodie is coming off. So how can I position this so I'm not showing anyone else? Uh, Okie dokie. Uh, this lovely gentleman's going to put a stencil on my arm. I reckon, like, and we're thinking just, kind of like right in here, kind yeah. of placed in between these other tattoos, and yeah. where it makes sense. Yeah, I'm just going to keep stacking more of them on there. Cool. Where'd you get this guy? Uh, I got him up in uh, Capitol Hill. Okay. Uh, one of the places like right, uh, right in the heart. Yeah. Okay. And it's I'm I'm happy with it. Yeah, it's it was cool, uh, it was impulse one. Uh, actually, uh, lovely folks, would you mind throwing some friendos in so I can demonstrate to this gentleman why I have a a grub tattooed on my arm? Yeah. Yeah. So as you see the little, uh, the ones in there. Yeah. That was the first little piece of fan art I got from these lovely folks. Uh -huh. So I got it so tattooed, you got it on, tattooed on you. Is that the case with this uh, long ship? Is it that is, yeah. Similar? Okay. Uh, you can just about make it out in. It doesn't look very good on the screen, but the little red and. Uh, this is the long ship. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. See you guys. You're all famous now. Maybe like right in here? Sounds good. Yeah. Because the idea is to kind of uh, pack it out as much as I can. Yeah. On this way, cool. Uh, okay. Down, so. Kind of I just want to make sure the bottom's straight. Yeah, that looks great. There's a big mirror over there if you want to look for yourself. Uh, I do. Uh, After this young lady. Indeed. <laughs> So, do you want to go have a look? And it's very bizarre talking to my device, but it's, it's quite 2018. Yeah, yeah, that's right. No one's, no one's completely unaware of what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just trying my best not to be that asshole. Okay, so, all right. Lovely folks. How can I do this without, there we go. All right, so that's where they want to put it. I think I'm pretty happy with it. What are you all reckon? Yeah, I think I like it. I like it. Okay, so 
hand, I'll have you lay down, head here, feet down here, on your back. Uh, do you want me to take my shoes off? No, it's okay. Okay. All right. Oh. Oh, getting comfy? I know. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, pillow good? You don't have to use the pillow if you don't want to. Oh, that's pretty comfy. Right, I'm just... Oh, get a quick angle where it's just me and my arm. There we go. Well, this isn't going to take us very long. No. So, that's what we're getting. Actually, my, my pale flesh is causing the camera to completely freak out. So, oh. <laughs> um, so uh, one of the things that I tend to do uh, is I talk a lot about video games. Mm -hmm. And hang on, let me see if I can get some... some What's crisp. the format that you're on? Is, uh, this, is, this, is, this is Twitch? It is indeed. Okay. Um, and usually what I would do is I would bring people on and interview them about you know, the, the stuff they do, what got them into it, their, their artistic sure. intent. Yep. Um, it's more a focus on it's more a focus on the artistic style rather than necessarily the like oh the, the, the video game graphics are that good yeah I, I understand so yeah. as okay. I have uh, as Chris as I have your attention like so how long have you been doing this professionally I've been uh, tattooing for about 23 years okay um, got involved in it as I started to get tattooed while I was in art school are we cool uh, made connections that way um, everything just kind of fell into place, and which is uh, kind of an uncommon way for things to work. Uh, true. It's a very hard industry to get involved in. So. Um, oh, and uh, I'll, I'll do my best to position the mic so you can hear Chris as best as. Um, so what school of uh, art did you study? Um, I studied at the Savannah College of Art and Design. Yeah. Um, in Georgia. Oh, in Georgia? Uh-huh. Way cool. Um, and I did a double major in painting and illustration. Yo. So, so yeah, I still do some kind of art on the side, but this is my main focus now. So. Way cool. Because it needs most of my attention. Okay. So as a uh, uh, as a as a fool of a took, um, you were saying that you know tattooing was a is is a difficult industry to get into. Mm -hmm. uh, is that the is that the skill gap? Is that the number of uh, people looking to get into it? It's the, uh, the people who are already involved in it uh, allowing other people to become part of it. Okay. It's a difficult thing. Hold, hold on just for a second. Not a worry. You guys get a view of my nose. Yeah. That's rad. <laughs> Again, I'm, I apologize for the incredibly weird angle. I'm just not showing any of the other individuals. For a Wednesday, it's very busy in here. Yeah, especially for this time of year. We usually get a little bit slower in December. Yeah? Uh, no, we're pretty happy today. <laughs> I mean, I'll be honest with you. I've been wanting to get this for a while, and okay. uh, we had a lot of technical problems today, so... Well, let's hope those are over. <laughs> <laughs> All right, are you ready? I am, yes. Go okay, for it. Okay, we'll start with just a couple little lines, give you a feel of what it's going to feel like, and then we'll get into it. Thank you. I uh, hope everybody, the, the sound isn't too uh, in-depth. Oh, that's all good. It's okay. Yeah. Right. Um, so, I mean, it's a difficult thing, I guess, to discuss whilst uh, in the environment, but would you say that it's a gatekeeping issue in terms of allowing new tattooists to come in, or is it just... Yep. Yeah. Well, it's, you don't want the market to get too saturated. Okay. You know? Um, and you want to... You want to be sure it's the right type of person getting involved in the industry that's going to keep the integrity of what's happening um, and, and understand their history okay. where tattoos have come from. So, I mean, I only have a cursory knowledge of kind of tattoo history, like, as most people do, you know, knowledge of like, you know, the Osaka, Yakuza, and um, a little knowledge about uh, the, the Maori tribes uh, in the South Pacific, Yep. Uh, as I was in uh, New Zealand for a couple of years, so... They're trying to find ways to distract me whilst I'm getting this done. That's cheeky, nice of them. Cheeky mother hubbards. <laughs> um, though they are saying it does sound like a swarm of bees. Eh, the bees are going to happen. Probably feel similar. Eh. I'd, I'd, I'd take this over the swarm of bees. I would too. I once disturbed a wasp's nest as a child. That was a bad day. Mm -hmm. That was an exceptionally bad day. 
situation has been made worse by the addition of yet more bees. <laughs> um, so yeah, my knowledge of tattoo history is very limited. Yeah, that's okay. Um, knocking tattoos scare the hell out of me, and I will never do one. That's that's my my long and short. <laughs> uh, and for those that don't know, a knocking tattoo is when uh, it is uh, lovely sharp pieces of wood gently tapped into one's flesh. Well, that's what the word tattoo means, to tap. <laughs> I genuinely didn't know that. Yeah. Well, there we go. Um, this seems to be one of the low pain days, which is quite nice. That's good. Yeah, there are definitely days. Yeah. You can get the same area tattooed two different days and have two different experiences. Um, God. It's also, like, the region is such a drastically different experience. Because um, from having my back done, there are whole swaths of your back that you can have tattooed, and it's almost a relaxing experience. You know, you feel the vibrations and the pressure, and it's like, yeah, I can do this. And then there are other points when you are ready to tell everyone where the microfilm is hidden. <laughs> like, I, yeah. I, I will tell you my launch codes. <laughs> uh, back of the kidneys. That was the one I wanted to, yeah. At that point, I would have given up yeah. personal information. You know, the body seems to know what's important when you're in an area that, uh, that is important, like your kidneys. Yeah. You know, it tells you. I always pride myself in having some of the hardest working kidneys in gaming. Oh, uh, so Greenfire actually wants to ask you a question, Chris, if that's okay. Yeah, sure. Um, Greenfire wants to ask about the history of women in the tattoo industry. If there are any uh, points worth chatting in that one. Um, it's, there's, there's definitely some, like in, in Seattle, actually, we have one of the uh, pioneering modern women tattooers. She's been tattooing since the... Uh, since the early 70s. Way cool. Uh, Vaveen Lazanga. Vaveen Lazanga. Vaveen Lazanga. She's worth looking up. She's still around. She still tattoos. Way cool. Um, and she got into the industry when it was ridiculously hard for women to get into it. I think there's still, like most industries, there's still a little bit of a male bias, but uh, that's breaking down. A little bit slower at times than it should. Um, I'm glad to see a lot more women tattooing these days. Very cool. Um, diversity is always a good thing. Yeah. More art styles, more people. Yeah. So, I don't know if that gives you much information, but... It's definitely something. Yeah. I mean, in the UK, we were slower to kind of adopt the, the non-standard tattooing styles, like, you know, the Japanese styles over the, like, traditional, out-of-a-book uh, yeah. Chinese symbolism stuff. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't know if that was the case out here in Seattle, if there's always been kind of like a, a culture of uh, flavor and variety of artwork styles. Um, yeah, I mean, it's at this point, for sure. Like, uh... <laughs> Being a little bit more artistic in tattooing really didn't like wasn't really a thing until the '60s. Okay. Um, where in the per in the person who pioneered that, probably everyone's heard their name before, is uh, Don Ed Hardy. Don Ed Hardy. Yeah. So if you remember, like 15 years ago, there was a uh, uh, Christian Dior had actually bought his name to do. Uh, T-shirt designs with Don Ed Hardy stuff on it. Oh wow! So he actually had very little to do with that whole thing. That was a fashion part of the fashion world, not so much part of the tattoo world. Um, but because of that, he's become somewhat of a, a, a household name. Okay. For a modern tattooer, but he's he started uh, putting more artistic and conceptual spins on traditional designs in the 60s. Okay. Um, but it didn't really explode until the 90s. There was a whole group of tattooers coming up, mainly most of them in San Francisco, which is where uh, Don Ed Hardy currently resides and is from. So San Francisco was really kind of the flashpoint of that. Was, yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, there was a lot of 
a lot of tattooers in the early 90s. That's kind of what got me interested in it. So all of a sudden you were seeing uh, these designs and these approaches that you had never seen before. Yeah. Um, and you're like, oh, this can be something a lot more than what it seemed like it was. My cool. Yeah. And again, thank you all for, for bearing with, with the uh, the audio on this one. I gave no, I did not think this through at all, Chris. Uh, this is, entire day has been in, impromptu. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably pretty loud in the video. But it's, it's cool to talk about. And um, who's that? Uh, Des has been posting some stuff. Yeah. Uh, Madame Lazonga, Seattle's first lady of tattoo. And uh, thank you for sharing that link, yo. Uh, actually, if you could throw that in the Discord, I would really appreciate it, because despite... I mean, one does not need to know ink to have it, but... No. It didn't strike me until this conversation how woefully unlearned I am about it as, a, as an art form, considering as I get it janked onto my body every, uh, every few months. <laughs> That's all right. You don't need to know how to make a chair to know if it's comfortable. That's a good way of putting it. Um, and yet, uh, honestly, all like the pain levels on this one are like easy street. Uh, I don't know if that's just having a low pain day or what have you. Uh, those of you that have had a lot of tattoos will know. Sundays, you sit in the chair and you're like, you know, person of iron, untouchable. And Sundays, like every line is. Uh, it's a fresh new experience. Ah, oh, and Spiller would like to say that he, that he thinks you're, you seem like good people. Oh, thank you. I try. Uh, so, Unsung would like to ask you, uh, what does Chris think of some of the tattoo-based reality TV that has cropped up now and then? I'm sure you get asked that one a lot. Yeah, yeah. Most of the tattoo industry, me including, is not very big fans of uh, any of the tattoo reality television series. Um, I don't feel it's, for everything it has done for the industry, I feel like it's taken away from the industry more than anything. Okay. Um, I mean, obviously, I'm busier because of it. Tattoos are more mainstream because of it. Okay. So in a business sense, that's good. But for, but on an integrity and artistic side, it I don't feel like it's helped the industry much at all. No, I can understand where you're coming from. Ta tattooers don't tend to like anybody else besides a tattooer making money off of the industry. Like, we want to keep it what it was and have a little bit of control over that, it, which is impossible now. It just, it just doesn't happen. It's too blown out. Yeah. But. I mean, I did a stint in film and television in my 20s, and I hated it with a passion. And it, I, I can't imagine that the people working on the production side of that show gave two hecks about it. Nah, they're just trying to make money. And you saw, especially with that first, I believe it was, was it LA? No, it was Miami first. Uh, Miami Inc. was the first one, yeah. You could see that after the first season, they changed the format from a documentary to a reality show. Yeah. Like, yeah. drastically. Yeah, when it first came out, we all were kind of interested in it. And we're like, oh, this is kind of cool. But then once it became the, uh, once they adopted the format that it eventually became. Yeah. Which we were all pretty disappointed to see that that's what was happening. And there were some artists uh, in, the, in those early days in Miami Inc. as well as uh, in LA Inc. who eventually had like quit because it just wasn't worth it to them. And they, they didn't want to make, they didn't want to have to make stuff up because they were being, you know, coerced by producers to act a certain way, you know, say certain things. That's, it's that's real not shame. really reality. I think Vice does a pretty good job of, um, on some of their uh, tattoo, not all of their tattoo little uh, reports, but 
They definitely okay. have some interesting stuff. I mean, personally, I'm a big fan of Vice's work across the board, so... Yeah. Uh, at least when they're wrong, they're, they're interesting, and they usually... They will usually go back to a topic, and sometimes with a different writer. And I yep. really respect that. Yep. Video gaming's still trying to find its feet in that space. Like, we know how to talk about a product, but we don't know how to talk about the people who make them yet. Yeah, okay. It's, it's getting better, but... Oh yes, I, I am holding the phone in my other hand. <laughs> um. uh, Reflective would like to inform you, Chris, that you have an epic beard. This has been decided. Thank you. Should have seen it before I got it trimmed yesterday. Was it? Was it a beast? Uh, it was just a little more out of control. Yeah, I had to. I was on a cooking show yesterday, which was very strange. I was a, a stand-in judge, as, um, and yeah, I, I looked at the beard in the mirror and I was like, this is a little bit too hobo chic for, uh -huh. for, for Twitch. You can go that pretty quickly. Yeah. <laughs> and my friends are very impressed that this hasn't turned into, and, then, and now Will swears a lot on stream. <laughs> I actually, I go inward if it really hurts, I just get quiet. Like, I just kind of, like, uh, I meditate inwards, if you will. I, I know some folks who have to talk through a tattoo to get through it. Yeah. I, I actually find it very difficult, but this one's really easy going, so good. Yeah. I've been told they have a lighter touch. <laughs> I mean, uh, we were having an interesting chat about this earlier before I decided that I was going to see about the availability in the... And I guess this kind of harkens back to the Miami Inc., which was that there's a real focus on... The show developed a real focus on you know, the tattoos must have inherent meaning. Yeah, it's kind of funny. And, like, I have tattoos. I have some that I've gotten when I was drunk. Uh, I still do not know how that store let us in and let us get work but it happened, and I've had some that I've gotten on a whim, and I've had some that I've gotten with deep personal meaning to them, and they, yeah. all, they all end up having the same importance. They develop their own stories, in my humble opinion. Well, I think, yeah, regardless of why you get a tattoo, once you have a tattoo, um, it becomes a part of a timeline. It like becomes who, it's a reminder of who you were at the moment you were getting that tattoo. That's a really good way of thinking of it. So even if you have, like I have tattoos that I would never change, but I got a long time ago. Yeah. And I would probably not have come up with that idea currently. Okay. You know, I wouldn't get that tattoo now if I didn't already have it. But it's not that I regret those, that decision to get the tattoo. It's just I was a different person when I got it. Okay. And so when I think about that tattoo, that reminds me space I was in, who I was. So, yeah, I think the coolest part about tattoos is they become a timeline. Yeah, that's a good way of thinking of it. And, and it's been one of my personal philosophies. There's the ones, I've got one on each leg that I should probably get a world of work done on, but, and we're done. That was, told you all, super soon. Let me wipe it off. There might be a couple little things. Just That's to make sure work. everything's dark. Uh, Johnny's saying, well, are you originally from the UK, right? Uh, technically, I was actually born in the US, but moved out there when I was a baby. So, uh, so I lived almost the entirety of my life in the UK. Uh, the is asking, I'm ready for a tonnage of Xmas food and cheer. I am not ready for a Christmas in any way, shape, or form. 
and at least for a few more days I'm just going to pretend like it doesn't exist so I don't have to think about it. <laughs> uh, who was that? Oh, you cheeky mother hubbards. <laughs> uh, I told them they weren't allowed to subscribe today because I can't read all their messages on my phone. Right. Uh, and so, of course, as a good group of people, they are totally doing as they're told. <laughs> I've done told you all. Well, every group has troublemakers. Yeah. Um, the Prolo is asking, am I ready for Smash Brothers? When's that coming out? For what? Uh, the Nintendo fighting game. Oh, okay. Is that coming out... I think this week at some point. The cheek of all, they're all doing it now. <laughs> so Kandoran has pointed out that whenever I just tell a group, when I tell this lot not to do something, that's when it gets done. I was um, going to make that comment too. Yeah. So, so Chris. Um, uh, do you spend much time on Twitch as a platform? Uh, I don't, know, but uh, one of the guys that works here um, does quite frequently. Oh, way cool. Yeah. So, um, we've just received what's called a raid, which is when another channel very cordially runs on over and says, Hey! Um, so, we've, we've just gained another 70 viewers. Um, awesome. So, hey 70 viewers, uh, this is Chris. Um, Chris is doing some wonderful tattoo work on my arm right now. So that's happening. <laughs> um, we're just finishing up. Yep, uh, it's happened. Now. It, it is done. Um, Let's clean it off so uh, everyone can see. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was having uh, masses of technical problems back. So I was grumping around the house, and then I walked down to Georgetown and was hanging out with everybody. And then I decided to get a tattoo because I can. So welcome Raiders from Squad Says. I hope you had a splendid day of cooking shows. Um, they, all right. All right. Take and a look. everybody, this is what I got. Check it out. Long shift immemorial. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what the hell? Aaron saying someone just chucked 50k. Five. I told you guys not to donate. God darn it. <laughs> So I can get on up. Oh, that looks so cool, dude. Yeah, do, go take a look in the mirror. Okay. You can wander back this way and I'll pop a bandage on you. Okay. Sorry, everybody. I'm just going to do a, a down nose cam so we're not showing any of the other t uh, the tattoo peeps. Oh. Okie dokie, Lokis. Make sure I'm not showing anyone else. Yep, we're good. All right. Check it out. So I just got my, yeah, I just got that tattooed on my arm. Not too shabby, huh? Not too shabby for a day off. <laughs> I'm trying not to yell, but I'm very excited by this. Chris, I feckin' love it, man. Thank Great. you. That's so, yeah. So, it, to me, it looks like it's nice and perfectly solid and everything. If it heals, if there anything comes out a little bit light, as long as you come back in six months, I'll do a touch-up on it for free. So. Oh, thank you. Okay. Unless you, you know... Well, immediately go into a sauna or something. Wait, so we can't do uh, our Wednesday sauna evenings? No. Curses! Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, everybody. The sauna stream has been cancelled. Uh, Chris has said so. <laughs> so, uh, Chris is just doing like a little uh, makeshift cover on that one, and then I will, I will pay this good gentleman what he is what he's most certainly owed, and then we will go from there. Um, because... I've done a lot of work for like for companies, for retail, and this is the first time I've been doing stuff for myself. Oh, so um, as as finances allow, there's more that I've been wanting to get based on things we've done. Yeah, certainly. Um, this is just uh, in case of the site's still bleeding. You know, yeah. End up being a walking biohazard. True. I wasn't bleeding too much, was I? No, not at all. Okay. I I have been one of those in the past. So Chris is just doing us basically like a drip tray for blood. And then covering it up. A little bit of plastic. Yeah. So I usually leave my bandages on until... Uh, you have plenty of tattoos, so you probably know how to take care of your tattoos. Yeah. But I usually leave my bandages on until the next day. Okay. Take it off the next morning. That way it doesn't stick to your sheets when you're sleeping. Yep. Um, but obviously you've been tattooed before and you know what you're doing. So. Yeah. There's nothing quite... Uh, yeah. If you want a fresh hell one and all, get your... Uh, 
uh, t back tattooed and then have that stick to something. The fear is real. Uh, Bramp says, a sauna, would that make that stream safe? Well, I'm so pale that you'd only be able to see uh, bright white reflections. Yeah, okay. All right, there so we go. we're going to move on over to the counter. I'm going to pay this good gentleman. And then, uh, coffee or a pint, I think is the next question. Oh. All right, did I get everything? Yep. And we move on over. Uh, and you will have... Uh, Pop this down here, and yeah, please apolo uh, apologize to your uh, your lovely co-workers for me just showing up, camera in hand. Oh, I'm sure it's no problem. Uh, and yeah, all you lovely raiders who just came over from Squad says, uh, once I, uh, I'm going to run to a coffee shop or to get a pint after this, and I want to hear all about the show, and I'll actually be able to answer some questions. So, so yeah, like we discussed, it's 125 for tax. Thank you kindly. There we go. And I'll let you figure out the rest. At least I can do, yo. And, dude, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, do you have a card yourself? I do. Okay. Because, uh... This one's got my information on it. And this is a shop card in case you want any of the shop information. Oh, I already have one of those. Okay. Cool. Uh, so... This is the gentleman here. Hey, Dan, I'll be with you in just a sec, yo. I just got a tattoo, because I can. That's a free sticker. Oh, I got a sticker! Mm. I mean, whatever, you know, it's a sticker. I'm, I'm, I'm cool, I'm chill. No, I'm, I'm not chill. Right, so that is me. All right. And yeah. hopefully these lovely folks threw a clip of your work. Yeah. And Please do. Because, to be honest, I'm within walking distance, so you know, it'd be great to come down and get some more work from yeah, you. Sure. Well, it's quite meet you. Chris, lovely. I'm go clean the station up. All right, and I'm going to go. Sorry. What do you reckon, everybody? Beer or coffee? What are we doing? Beer or coffee? Okay. And slowly, I pack away all my nonsense. <laughs> yeah. And again, just yeah. Thank you, yeah, colleagues, yeah, for putting up in my show. When you're around uh, after about three weeks, uh, I'd love to see the tattoo deal. Okay, that'd be real cool. So everybody, we've been invited back to, to show Chris the, the work as it finishes. Uh, I'm saying coffee, 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 blindfolded, no beer, beer free, don't lose up your blood too much, coffee. Uh, Jack says can't, beer on Twitch. Um, you don't want to be that guy. Oh, please. But uh, I did ask you all, and you've all spoken, so let's go get a coffee. Let's go get a coffee and chat. I want to hear all about your day, everybody. Especially those of you that came over from Squad. Here is the people, Dan Jones. All right, sorry, I'm just getting all my shite together. Oh. Hang on, just one second. and away. Oh, all right. Thanks again, Chris. Let's roll. Uh, phone, wallet, keys. Yeah. Whoa. So how's that for an impromptu day, huh? Right, so Unsung says, uh, I uh, coughed up a cast from being ill. Ooh. They're known as uh, plastic bronchitis. Grim. Uh, Blindfighter says, drinking beer on stream is banned because technically counts as promoting beer drinking, I'm guessing. I have no fecking clue, my friends. I have no fecking clue. But I just got inked on there, so it's all good. It's all good. Uh, Ice Grid says, okay, so far... <laughs> the graphics are unrealistic. Yeah, this new game is crazy. So, uh, here to the people, Dan Jones. How you doing? Uh, my shit's wrecked today. So I went down to Georgetown and I got the tattoo. So why heckin' not? Oh, crud. Um, to those of you that have just joined us from Squad Says, hang on, now I'm outside. Now I can do it properly. So one and all, as you have joined us, what, oh, friends? <laughs> um, the internet and our base of operations is just fecked. Uh, we've gotten, um, it's uh, ISP wide. Uh, we can barely get connection to some sites. We can get connections to others and yeah. 
So pretty much everything's hacked. So I walked down the hill to Georgetown and now I'm there. Uh, here it's the people. Dan Jones says, uh, it's very fun. All right, so, Rosemary says, uh, everybody nearby gives Will strange looks. Oh yeah, totally. And uh, while I do not mind for the average person on the street, I felt a little bit bad being that tosser in the tattoo place, but there we go. Um, and I do want to apologize as well, everybody, that if the audio was all over the place in there, I have not planned today. I have made, <laughs> I have done very little in preparation. Uh, today we were going to be streaming a game called Broken Reality, which was going to be this like crazy ass, like vaporwave, like type nonsense. And that didn't happen. That didn't happen. But, you know, there we go. So here we are. Walk it. Walk it to the leaves. Mm. Hang on, let me show you this. Oh, walk it to the leaves. Just. 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 <laughs> Oh, lights ready. I'm trying to get myself run over. Um, so yeah, Broken Reality is this crazy ass like vaporwave indie game that kind of looks like one part, I'm gonna say it, Bloodnet, and one part, um, uh, I don't know, like Nickelodeon style cartoon. Ooh. Oh, yeah, pun who said punch the sign? We're not punching the sign! Oh yeah, and if you weren't here earlier, check out these feckin' cool vehicles. Like these, like, super old-style Ford trucks. Uh, Georgetown is about as close to uh, Fallout 2 as I want to get, but it's really heckin' stylish. And so those of you who just joined us, we've just been doing a, a walking around and, a, and kicking about. Oh, I almost lost chat there. Uh, I'd also like to remind you all that I cannot see it if you donate bits or cash or anything, so you are all forbidden from donating money, bits, or subscribing today. You are forbidden. You are not allowed. I just, I, I want you all to know that rule is in place. And I am totally in charge, so I can stop you all from doing it. Oh, excuse me, yes, uh, hello, my name is Brother Joe, and I'm a rhinoceros. I uh, quite like coffee. Rhinoceros coffee. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure I'm allowed to drink a beer on Twitch. No, you know what? Not gonna try it. Okay, okay. Wax Sabbath, an eco-conscious uh, waxing and, s and sugaring spa? I don't know what sugaring is. Well, who's that just told me to get wrecked? God darn it. Um. <laughs> Sorry, I just love the fact that it's called Wax Sabbath. Uh, and as there's no one here, because uh, there were people in the window earlier, check out the Flying Squirrel Pizza Go. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Isocrid, I saw that one though. Mother Hubbard. And she had saying, go get sugared. No, <laughs> I don't know what that means. That might be breaking Twitch and T's and C's. Oh, Will, do you remember that time you got sugared and showed everybody literally every part of your anatomy, including parts you didn't know you had? Oh, wasn't that a fun time? Thank you, plane! <laughs> oh. In this episode, we'll shout some planes. Oh, I do love Georgetown. As I was saying earlier, this kind of... Oh, God damn it, Isocrid. Uh, how much is... Because I can't... Oh. Mm. Uh, rhymes are saying, uh, rule limits dangerous drinking, i.e. excessive amounts while engaged in activities that are made dangerous by drinking. Okay. Anyway, but the team decided that we all talked and we decided that I was going to go get a coffee. So that's what we're going to do. Although, uh, if, if caffeine and peeps are here, check it out. This is my favorite gaff. I guess those of you that have been here throughout the, the most of the stream got this this little run through the town earlier, so I won't dump. Oh God, that car scared the crap out of me. Oh, he squeaked on the side, I thought I was done for. I was like, well, it's been a good run, everybody. It's been nice, it's been fun. Oh, actually, who's working? Who's working Starbrass at the moment? Uh, nobody that I know, fake. 
if I knew the bartender, I'd definitely have to go and introduce you all. Because, I don't know, like I was saying, this whole thing... God damn it, Isocrid! Your instructions weren't clear enough. Uh, my noise is on... I hope you're happy. Um, Rhymes with Moose asking, so is this the place where everyone knows your name? Not quite. And considering how I drink, I think uh, everyone knowing my name would be uh, not a good idea. Uh, Chiat saying, this is basically uh, Twitch Play Sims, only it's a weird third person camera and the poly count is super high. Yeah, and I know how to get out of a pool by myself, so in your face, the Sims. Um, but coffee does sound really good. Uh, and I might see if I can uh, prop us up in a corner as well, because it's getting a bit chilly. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I'm putting on my glove because my hand hurts. Oh. Just waiting for these cars to come past. Spiller just says, try and make a stop. I am suddenly aware of how powerless I am to make you all do anything. <sighs> Machine House Brewery. What the hell is that place? Hmm. El Serenio, Serinto, warm up by the fire. Oh, that sounds lovely and incredibly expensive. Cool. I have no idea what's down that way, but it's like Machine House Brewery or something. Seems real cool. Uh, Caffeine says, I was making dinner and missed the tap. Let me see. I'll do it in a sec. I'm just going to go. Uh, I'm going to um, uh, uh, What's It Street Coffee again, Caffeine. The place that you were hanging out. So I'm gonna head down there, I'm gonna get a cup of coffee and then I can show you all a little bit of my ink. Well, what's actually gonna happen is I'm gonna fumble through several layers of clothing and then show you some of my ink. So we'll go from there. Uh, Secretly Robin's saying, put a pin in your map. I'm more uh, just impressed that there's a part of this town I haven't already been drinking in, but there we go. Oh, I should not cross there. Oh, please don't run me down. Oh. <laughs> oh man, this place is empty. Oh, I tell you, I'd never be able to afford it, but if I somehow came into millions upon millions, this, like, down here is where I'd open, like, Longship Command. Oh, okay, there's millions and millions. I wonder where I'd go. I mean, I don't... I don't think I want to move out of Seattle, but uh, also this lady is not paying attention, so I ain't crossing. And I don't know if you'll be able to see it a little bit better now in the evening, but we're back here at uh, Fantastic Graphics at a Georgetown Records. I'm gonna sneak past the back of this lady's bumper because she's clearly playing with her phone. But it's okay when I do it because I'm a civilian. I'm a civilian. Yep. Will's uh, wonderful, impromptu singing there. Hey, we're back here once again. Greetings from Georgetown. Uh, right, might be able to, might be able to sneak you all, oh, hang on, face cam. Might be able to sneak you all in. Uh, so if you don't mind me uh, queuing quietly for a second while I get a coffee. Oh, you know what we can do in a second? Hang on, I was waiting for the queue to dissipate. You know what we can do? Are they doing glass blowing stuff? Might be. No, they're not doing glass blowing. But, you know what we can do? Who wants to play some pinball? Uh, yeah, yeah. We can do some flip flip later. Because this place is awesome. Uh, they've got a uh, Game of Thrones machines in the back. They've got a fecking cool um, uh, Starship Troopers machine upstairs, which I'm actually pretty good at. Yeah, that's right. We can play a pinball. I don't know what that fecking noise is, though. All right. So. I'm going to go on in and get a coffee. And I'm just going to put you guys down here again so we're not um, uh, eyeballing uh, poor people who have not signed up to be part of this. And then, yeah, Jack's got it, stealth streaming. Then we'll be back in a second. Uh, if it's quiet in there, we'll hide in the corner and hopefully no one will notice. Being very stealthy. Shh, shh.
Hello, hello. Uh, could I please have a 16 ounce latte? Sure. Um, with an extra shot, please, if that's okay. I'm pretty good. Today's been an impromptu day, uh, uh, walking around with my phone and showing people uh, Georgetown remotely. Oh, nice. Uh, and I finally went to the tattoo place in the corner and got just a, a quick little half-hour job, so... Nice. Yeah, it's been, a, fun. it's been a good little day. How was your day been? Not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, somewhat less exciting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Somewhat less exciting. Well, it's only because everything at, uh, everything at work exploded, so... Oh, no. I was like, what am I going to do with my day? Thank you kindly. Thank you. I think we got away with it. Haha. <laughs> Wait, what did we actually just get away with? I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, so that is, hang on, what's my bloody sign? Uh, All City Coffee, which is where I pretty much spend an inordinate amount of time reading my book. Ah. Oh. Oh. You know what? It's not until you live in a couple of places in the world that have stonkingly good coffee, you realise just how feckin' cool that is. Uh, now, where can we go sit? I wonder. I wonder if we can go sit over by the, um, uh, the town hall. I mean, we could... See, the thing is, we could go into Flip Flip, but I think it's going to be exceptionally loud in there. And I don't, uh, and I don't want to uh, subject you all to uh, uh, ringing of bleep bloops. Uh, Ket tried the ice cream place, and he said it was pretty good. Uh, they did this whole thing where, so you pick your ice cream, and then you pick what you want in the ice cream. Then they blend it like soft serve, and then serve it, and then give you a round of toppings, which sounds kind of cool. But Ket wasn't taken on it, and like you know, but. We all have our skill sets in our classes. If Ket tells you like a thing isn't necessarily a great pastry, you gotta you you roll with that mother Hubbard. He knows, and 
Yeah. Okay. So Ice Grid's got to run an errand back in a while. Um, the blindfold is saying, bleep bloop. I just as a, do you mean as a statement or as a matter of fact? One does both bleep and bloop. Just hope I'm not walking us into, walking us into danger. I know, I know. I gotta say, like, thank you all for coming and chilling and nilling with me today. I had a really, really, really shitty night last night. And then this morning I was, oh, I was just looking forward to getting stuck into a game, streaming and spending time with you all. And then that just could not happen. Oh, hang on. Oh, gotta swap hands. I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. Ah. Are we? We're back. Chiat says, hey, Will. Uh, you should punch an inanimate object. Pfft, no, I'd have to be a fucking stupid asshole to punch a stop sign or something. Oh. Jack saying, uh, "Where you at? Uh, I can check the map for uh, map for a park or something." Um, well, I'm right by uh, Georgetown Old City Hall. And wait, who's that? Uh, is someone with two month hype. God damn it, I can't. Mm, mm, this is why you're not allowed. Stop it. No more subs, no more bits, no more donations. Stop it. Mm. So maybe come over there. I swear, I will, I'll do it. All the fancy people. The fancy people in the fancy office behind are looking at me like, oh, who's that look? Right. So I know there's nothing over that way. Uh, let's go find out. I'm gonna see what's over that way in a second, but I need a safer place to cross so I don't get myself <laughs> blatted down. Uh, you can get a little bit of a better view now of the, uh, the super lovely guitar shop behind me from previous. So I don't know if you can see any of the the myriad of instruments in the background. Damn it, Spiller! Told you. Okay, okay. So what if, what if, instead of doing sensible things all day, we just uh, gave it all up and bought an inordinately expensive bathtub? I mean, it's an option, right? Okay, so I can cross here, which is slightly safer. Oh man, there's like an Elysian van over there. Ooh. So much of this town I still have yet to discover. Just pushing the button with my knee. Uh, so, Unsun says, uh, I think Ket would tell you that that is your new bed. Well, I don't necessarily think, um, I don't think I've ever slept in a bathtub sober. Uh, Alpha Delu says, I mean, uh, if we're fiscally irresponsible, I'd rather you all buy me a Nintendo Switch. But that might just be me being selfish. Probably get more use of it out of a bathtub, you know what I'm saying? Johnny's asking, Will, US citizenship, how do you get it? Uh, marry into it? Uh, or have lots of money to pay someone to get you sorted? Uh, and even then, there's a little bit of a kind of like a a citizenship lottery. Um, I, and I do not want to turn the conversation into one of a uh, political nature, but in the current climate, I, I would not recommend someone try and move out here. Uh, uh, who's that? That's uh, Jarilan. God darn it, Jar Jarilan. Thank you kindly for the sob, but uh, you lovely Mother Hubbards. Uh, but at the moment, I can't, um, I can only see a little bit of any of the subs and stuff that come through. So I can't, I can't thank you all. And feckin', who's that? Nomadic. <clears throat> I told you, no bits. No bits. Yeah, we're kind of getting to the, get the shifty of the town now. Well, I've walked halfway across town with this coffee. Well, across Georgetown. I realize I'm busting for a piss. Uh, so Jaraland said, I had no choice. Uh, my husband turned off his stream. 
and I hadn't been done yet. Hey, I, you know that I am stupidly grateful for all of you lot. Oh look, it's a paint store. Who wants to pay the town red? Man, I bet no one's made that joke. Uh, so there's a really cool brewery over there, but... Uh, I don't even know if I'm allowed to hang out by the Georgetown. Uh, no, <laughs> Spiller says, I don't even know what no bits are. Spiller, you know what you're doing. You know. What was I waffling on about? Yeah, so... I was, I was having a very bad day today. And then this has all worked real well. And I've ended up having a lovely day. And, you know, getting a tattoo was not the most fiscally responsible thing that I have done all day. Oh, I've done it in a while. But I wanted to do it. I told you all that my goal is to basically turn my right arm into a, a sleeve homage to longship stuff. And to be frank, the only reason why I haven't got the cuttlefish on there, I haven't got um, uh, the bulb from, uh, what was it? What was it? It was um, uh, the bulb from One Shot. The reason why I haven't got um, Slug Cat on there is just been finances. Who's doing it? Get to the boat! Mm! Nomadic. Oh, 230 G. I literally just told you. No donations. No subs, no bits. How are you... T I like how you've all worked out that you can be generous and mess with me simultaneously. And it seems to become your new favourite hobby. Alright, sorry, I'm going to do a little bit of juggling here, so I apologise for the sky cam. Oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Oh, there we go. Oh, getting cold. Getting very cold. Oh, and I'm hooking onto stuff. Uh, uh, Saralyn says, uh, you will find, Commander, there are very few things I must do. Kane. Uh, Bram says, I was trying to be nice to Will. I have to wait till tomorrow. Hey, you know, I'm... Jokes aside, you know I'm grateful, right? Also, it appears there's some seating here because uh, these two places appear to be brown papered up, so... We can just chill in ill here for a second when I have my coffee. I ordered way too much coffee. Oh, can take a little sit down. Oh. The, hang on, I'm gonna spin you around. Whoop. <laughs> Never get tired of that. Okay. So now you have my attention. How are you all doing? Uh, Rhymes with me says, too much coffee is blasphemy. No, no, not too much coffee. Like, too much liquid, I think would be the better phrasing. Val says, uh, it's been cool hanging out with you, but I must go to my bed. Val, go get some sleeps, yo. Um, I mean, at some point, I should probably um, uh, bring this to a close and start heading up the road. I'm not running out of battery, mind you, but I will eventually, uh, I will eventually run out of light. The lamentable's part. Uh, Des says he has to pee. That's what he's saying. Uh, Frag says, how's the bathroom situation going on the streets of George? It's, it's happening, it's happening. Frag says, uh, where are you going? Well, we could go to Flip Flip, but Flip Flip's very loud. Uh, Jared Ann says, I'm jealous that you still have sun on the East Coast. Yeah, time travel's a bitch. Uh, Spiller says, it's 1.30 where I'm here now, and I am somewhere between making popcorn and going to bed. That's a good place to be at. at and get to the boat is delighting in messing with me by gifting a sub to Frag Hatter. See, now I'm sitting down, I can actually see a little bit more of what's going through. And, like, everyone who has subbed today, everyone who's done a gift, everyone who's been messing with me, I might be like, grumpy face, but I'm very grateful. And the story I was trying to tell was basically, I, I was in a real bad way last night and I was in a real funk this morning. And it was like, you know that where you focus on one thing? I'm like, all right, shit's on fire, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna get on stream, I'm gonna hang out with everybody and it's gonna be great. And then that couldn't happen and it just 
Yeah. Yeah. So, because they're doing some work. So I flopped around a little bit and then Navalis. And that's a two month as well. Navalis with I rebel, eat the rich. Cheers all. J pot. Oh, yes, yeah, so and now everyone's doing it. Fecking. God bless you lot. God bless you lot. Where was I, what was I going with? Uh, I completely lost my train of thought there. Yes, basically today has been a fecking great little day. I was not expecting this. I wasn't expecting to have as much fun. I wasn't expecting to get a tattoo. Uh, I wasn't expecting any of this. And I guess that's the thing. I never... I am constantly surprised at how lovely you all are, all are. It's been a whole year, a whole feckin' year since I moved to Seattle. And you know what? I spent the whole day with 50 friendos. That's not bad. That's not bad. For someone who's great worries in this world are being alone. That's not bad at all. Uh, Frag Hunter says, what's your tat of? I missed the show. Hey, Frag, if you just have a look to the side, uh, I got just a little line work version of the Longship uh, sub logo, because I can, because it's mine. Uh, but I will get a, uh, either a screen cap or a photo of it later. Uh, Alfred Dilly says, uh, we establish this in-game. When Will becomes rich, he spends it all on a cat. Or several. Um, so, yeah. Like, I don't think I can take you lot into a bar and that's going to be pretty loud. Uh, flip Flip, I might go to, but just because i got a bag of quarters. But again, I guess it's going to be super, super loud in there. So, I might do a, a walk and talk with you as we, as we head on over that way. Actually, which is the quickest way to... Uh, probably this way. All right, so let's do a walk and talk while uh, wrapping this up. Um, get to the boat says, so you're saying that uh, the cat eats all of Will's riches. Sounds good. Oh yeah, and if any of you didn't see the demonic cat t-shirt from earlier today, like that thing was the feckin' bomb. That's, that may be a thing that I need to uh, acquire into my life. Spiller says... It can be hard to remember sometimes, but life isn't all bad. These things are only helping you. And cheers to you, Spiller. Cheers to you. And cheers to you all. We all go through the dark times. And it's weird to think that I wouldn't have you lot if I hadn't gone through... One of the shittiest couple of years. I mean, feck. And the hard times aren't over. But hanging with you lot, that's, that's worth it. It's worth staying up late. It's worth fighting. <laughs> it's worth reading 20 fecking forum threads about what people think of you on the internet. It's worth it. You know what I'm saying? We've, we've spent a long time, ooh, learn to paint and draw, and least creativity, with affordable rates. Affordable rates of art, yo. We've, we've spent a lot of time and a lot of effort this year on the longship, on bringing everything together, and it's working. It, I, I do not resent the amount of work that goes into keeping it going. I feckin' love it. I love being able to dedicate myself to an idea, being the feckin' human megaphone for you lovely numpties. I think that's pretty awesome. And honestly, I don't spend that much time being uh, a miserable grumpy butt, but most of the time, I think it's pretty feckin' awesome, if I'm honest. I'm, <laughs> I'm the brokest I've been since my, uh, my minimum wage affirmation teen years, and... I'm still staying on my main sofa. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Probably another... God, I don't know. Ah, that's a tomorrow problem. But 
yeah, all right, I'm fucking killing my words because I'm shite at expressing my feelings. I'm incredibly grateful to have you all. I'm incredibly grateful to be able to do this. I wouldn't have thought this was a thing I was ever going to be able to do as we are. And here I am. I've got coffee in one hand. I've got you lot in the other. I'm walking through some, the same shady underpass where I've had a street party of my own volition. <sighs> so... Um, BT, you've got nothing to apologise for. Leaving. Leaving to the tattoo part. That was, that was a nice little addition. So, you lovely folks, I'm going to uh, neck my coffee. I'm going to head into Flip Flip. I've got a bag full of quarters and I'm going to go play... Oh, sorry. Uh, and I'm going to go play Starship Troopers until my hands bleed. Spiller saying, so my closest friends only because... That's some of the hard times. They might never, uh, they might have been my friends, but they'd never be, yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. Charlene's saying, uh, so is Will Viking dad? Uh, I'm more like Viking drunk uncle. I like to think of myself as the bannerman and the feckin' human megaphone of this operation. Some people are taken to calling me captain of the boat. But I think that's only because we've got so many good people who can run the feckin' ship. Oh. <laughs> so. Everybody, thank you. It's been a year in Seattle. This has been a great little, I guess a great little anniversary. I think another year, I think I could go for that. So. On vaguely uh, sensible things. I will let you all know what is going on with the internet situation. And in the event that we can't stream tomorrow, feck it, we'll do the same. Uh, not necessarily Georgetown, but I'll think of something. I'll walk around, we'll hang out, it'll be great. Um, keep an eye on the Discord. If you're not on the Discord, if someone could link that, that would be lovely. Uh, everybody who I didn't give a shout out to about your cheers, your donations, your whatevers, uh, I bloody told you. Hang on. Uh, red background, so it's kind of in th a thematic. I bloody told you, didn't I? Nah. What I want to say is thank you all, all right? So, have a stonkingly good evening. I'll see you all on the Discord. And with any luck... Ooh, shite, I almost forgot. With any luck, tomorrow is Alien Isolation. Ah, <laughs> that's going to be fun. I Also, I got uh, Christian Jones, who you've all met before from our design club, who is an excellent friend of mine and worked on Alien Isolation, so we're going to be getting skinny whilst I am freaked out to all heck. All right? So, I love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? All right. Where's the end button? Oh, dear Lord!